Hey, welcome back to the Zombie Tactics channel. Today I want to talk a little bit about concealed carry. Um, carrying one of these things on your person, uh, maybe in a waistband or a holster, inside the waistband holster, outside the waistband holster, in a shoulder holster, whatever. It doesn't really matter where you're carrying it. There have been a, quite a few videos on YouTube, and I've read quite a bit of um, articles online or in print about the importance of concealed carry and the importance of always carrying. Uh, certainly, I'm of the mind uh, about a few things. One of them is that the Second Amendment is probably the only concealed carry permit you should ever have to have. Unfortunately, that's not the case in all of the states of the Union at this point in time. Too bad, but uh, most places in the country you can carry a concealed weapon in one fashion or another. If you are someplace where you can carry a gun uh, without a permit, uh, if they're that enlightened in their weapons policies, or if you're someplace where you can get a concealed carry permit, I think it's the duty of every gun owner to get that permit and to carry that gun with them at all times. A, a high percentage of carry. Uh, having the gun and not having it with you doesn't really do any good when you're uh, in the middle of a bank robbery or you know somebody's trying to carjack you at gunpoint. Um, and you know the same goes if you're in a part of the country where a permit is not required. If you're in some part of the country where the only way that you can have a weapon is to have one in, in close pr proximity, perhaps in a locked case and unlocked and maybe the ammunition somewhere around you or whatever, frankly, I even think you ought to do that. If the best you can do, say you're in California, where I live, and you can't get a concealed carry permit, well, you can do something called uh, unloaded, con unloaded locked concealed carry, where basically that means the gun is unloaded, there's no ammunition in the gun, it has to be in a locked container, you could have a magazine with it in that same container and you have to have that in some condition where you could quickly get to it and load it. You know, certainly if somebody is right on you and mugging you, that's not going to make a difference, but it could give you a fighting chance in a situation where, say there was a Columbine or Virginia Tech type shooting where maybe you had more than a little bit to retrieve a weapon and uh, make a difference to save your own life or that of other people. So I'm, I'm really big on the notion that, yeah, uh, you shouldn't have to require permission from the government to carry a weapon on your person, but if you do, get that permission or use whatever le legal means there are to have a weapon available. Now, aside from that, most of the videos and, and articles I've read in magazines and things like that um, seem to be about topics like, well, what's the best concealed carry weapon? Is it a CAR PM9 or a Ruger LC9? Is it a, is it a Glock 26 or a compact Smith & Wesson M&P or something else? Or should you try to conceal the full size 1911 at all times and anything else just isn't worth it? And all kinds of things about uh, well, here's how to carry it, what kind of holster, what's the best holster, is it better to go for appendix carry or, you know, under the, sh you know, a shoulder carry and magazines over here or a gun around the back and what backup guns you should carry. And I've, I've seen all kinds of articles and videos on, on, on tactics and skills. But I want to talk about something a little bit different today. And I want to talk about what I consider the burden, the philosophical and moral burden of carrying a weapon on you. Now, just as I think the Second Amendment establishes or protects <laughs> the, the right to have a weapon and to defend yourself with it, I think that there, and, and that that right is actually an unwritten rule that's just one of nature, I think it's also an unwritten rule of nature that with every right comes a responsibility. Um, I'm a big fan of Spider-Man, and Spider-Man's motto is that with great power comes great responsibility. I thoroughly accept that as a piece of a valid um, philosophy, uh, moral philosophy in particular. So what does that mean if you're going to carry concealed? What is your responsibility aside from having the gun on you? Well, it means that you're going to only employ that weapon in a responsible fashion and that your behavior has to change because now you're a person that has what the law would call an elevated uh, responsibility or a, a heightened burden of care. There's all kinds of different language that's used to describe this, and it's the idea that, like, when you have a gun on you, it's res it, it's incumbent upon you to act different than the other people around you. And this is a, a, a principle that's often lost and isn't talked about a lot. Um, I have a lot of my viewership that are 
too young to own guns, but soon will be old enough to own guns. And I know that there's a lot of people that watch my videos that are kind of in that 20, 21, 22 year old range where they're going to get their hands on a handgun pretty soon. And maybe you live someplace that has constitutional carry where it's like the only thing you need to carry a gun on you is go buy one and stick it in your waistband and that's it. So here's what I think are some burdens that are moral burdens upon you uh, if you're going to be carrying a weapon concealed. One of them is know what the heck you're doing with that gun. Understand everything about that gun. Go through the manual. Understand how the safety works, how the magazine works. Every little feature about that gun ought to be something that you're completely conversant with, that, that it's not a mystery to you. It's not some magic talisman that you've got in your pocket that you think that somehow it's going to give you superpowers and ward off crime. Uh, along with that, um, getting some kind of training in basic safety. Uh, concerning weapons, I think is a responsibility. That's a burden upon you that someone that doesn't carry a weapon with them all the time doesn't necessarily have. Some kind of training is really important. If that's formal training from a national organization like Tactical Response, who, I'm re who I've reviewed and have recommended very highly, or more of a regional organization like Stone Cobra Tactical or Valley Defense, both of whom I've reviewed, um, yeah, that's a good idea too. Um, you know, and if you can afford that, certainly do that. I always kind of wonder about people who will go out and spend six hundred dollars for a gun, and then they'll buy another two hundred dollar weapon light that clips on the front, and they'll spend some more money to put some night sights on it, and then they'll go out and they'll stress over, you know, where they're going to carry it, what kind of holster they're going to get, and, and and but then they won't spend one hundred and fifty dollars on some training. That doesn't make sense to me, and it, it, you've got to adopt a different mindset that says, no, I'm serious about this, and I'm taking that responsibility to carry a weapon seriously. Well, aside from all of that, that kind of stuff like you want to be trained, you want to know what you're doing with your gun, uh, you're going to carry a responsibility so that you're not accidentally you know, printing or showing the gun inadvertently and scaring little old ladies who really ought to have better sense. Um, it might not be a little old lady, it might be a little young lady. <laughs> <laughs> or a young man who gets a little bit skittish around weapons. You know that you don't want to make somebody afraid for no good reason. This goes into another area, and it means that you must, in a sense, become a different person if you are going to carry a gun on you. And this especially goes, I think, to those of us who consider ourselves some sort of a, a sheepdog personality, particularly the younger sheepdogs in the in the audience. Uh, where your your immediate responsibility is to want to help. You want to right wrongs. You want to be the defender of the weak, that kind of thing. Um, I'm going to give you a scenario. Before I give you that scenario, I want to just talk that the re in almost every jurisdiction, the only reason you ever have to pull that gun out from a holster to the point where somebody else can see it is if somebody is involved in some activity where your life is threatened or you are in danger of great bodily harm. Those are the phrases you'll hear, hear over. Your, your life is in danger, or you're in danger of great bodily harm, or someone else's life is in danger, or they're in danger of great bodily harm. Great bodily harm means, like, you know, not a bloody nose. It means, like, a broken arm, a broken leg, uh, a, a poked out eye, busted teeth, something that's going to send you to the hospital, you know, something that's going to require uh, medical care. Aside from that, I know that there are some parts of the country where, no, if somebody breaks into your property, you can use lethal force to defend property. I have moral problems, personally, with shooting somebody over uh, the fact that they're trying to take my TV. Um, if you're in a part of the world where you're allowed to do that, I would suggest to you that from a moral standpoint, you have a right to defend your property, but probably a $350 TV is not worth somebody else's life, even if that somebody else is a scumbag crackhead, you know. If they're not actually threatening your life, uh, let's rethink this situation. And that brings me to my point. This elevated burden to be a different kind of person, and it requires you to actually man up and have greater control of your emotions and your reactions than someone who doesn't have a weapon on them at all times. And I'll give you an example. This is not an example that's happened to me, but things like this happen all the time. I've seen them happen to other people. Say you're wait, waiting in line at a concert, and it's the concert of the century. It's the last show that somebody's going to play. You know, Elvis is back from the dead, and he's going to 
<laughs> and the tickets are $1,000 a piece, so you've paid good money for this, and you're there with your, you know, you've got your date, or maybe you've got your wife or your daughter, you know, in your hand there, and you're waiting in line there, and it's a packed crowd, and, you know, everybody's having a good time, and blah, 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 and you got your concealed gun on you because, you know, you want to be ready for anything. Uh, well, some drunken idiot in front of you backs up in line because he's got his beer and he's swilling it, and he runs right into your wife, your daughter, your da date, and runs into her so hard that it knocks her over on the pavement. Maybe she even, you know, skins her elbow or scrapes her knee, something like that, and she's actually hurt. And that's bad enough. But now this idiot turns around because he's a drunken jerk, and he says something like, I shot your gun, you stupid bitch! I mean, this kind of thing happens in life, and this is where stuff starts happening. Now, I know how I'd feel if something like that happens. I know that some of you are kind of getting your little bit of your, you know, Irish up already, just hearing that kind of story. But think about this for an instance. Is this the point in time to say, hey, buddy? No, it's not. Because so far what's happened is not great bodily injury or the threat of great bodily injury or a threat to your life or the life of another individual. What's happened is a belligerent jerk being a belligerent jerk. And yeah, I really seriously would like at that point in time to um, pull him aside and have a word with him. But I have an, an enhanced burden on me. I have an enhanced set of chains, if you will, on my behavior because I'm carrying this thing. And I've got to act with that level of responsibility. So what am I going to do in a case like that? And please, God, let this be the way that I act. It's not worth taking somebody's life over pushing my daughter, my wife, my date down. Even if I'm going to lose face with my wife or my date. Even if they don't feel great about the way that I'm going to handle this. It's the time for me, if I've got a gun on me, to pick my loved one up off the ground grab them by the hand, and walk away. And if I really want to try, if, I, if I've really got my head together and I can really man up enough to do it, even play this card. Hey, I'm sorry, man. Hey, I'm sorry, man. We're going to get out of here right now. Yeah, he's the jerk. Yeah, he's an idiot. Whatever. Now, where I'm heading is over to security. They're going to deal with this guy. They're going to deal with the idiot line. And you... I know that this, this grates against people's sense of moral outrage. Yeah, he's an idiot. He's a drunk. He's a jerk. He pushed your, your daughter, your wife, your date down. There she is. She's skinned up. Maybe she's bleeding. But that's not worth taking somebody's life over. Nor is it worth even me doing what I would normally do in that case if I wasn't carrying a gun, which is, hey, buddy, boom! You know, and give him a shove and say, you know, why don't you watch the, why don't you watch the hell where you're going? If I do that, and I don't have a, a weapon on me, you know, I may be escalating the situation to some kind of an altercation, or I may be ending the altercation right then if the guy's drunk and he falls down and whatever. But if I do have a gun on me, and I push the guy, and then the guy, he's really mad, and he comes up with a knife, and then I've really got to go to guns, I've made the situation worse, you see. I helped escalate that situation to a point where deadly force was necessary. So, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to ever be the one who causes the situation where someone has to lose their life or have a, uh, a terrible experience that will definitely alter their life, which is what it would be if you got shot about nine, ten times and survived. Uh, so some things to think about in your personal moral code and your makeup when it comes to carrying a weapon on you. You have a duty and a responsibility to carry in a fashion that is responsible. And you have an elevated moral and legal responsibility to not cause problems. And even in situations where, you know, somebody would look at the way you handle it and say, oh man, you're a total wuss, man. He just walked all over you. Yeah, he walked all over me. You know what? I'm glad because we're both alive and I didn't kill somebody tonight. It's a better night for everybody, for me to be a wuss, than for that to happen. Um, particularly those of you who are younger, who, who 
might look at a gun as a way to give you superpowers or something like that. It doesn't. It limits your options in life to the point where you now have to act like a man with a gun. And let's all work harder to make sure that the man with the gun is a good guy. That's zombie tactics for today, tonight, preparing you for a world gone dead. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.